This is a walkthrough for problem two in our problem set one. And we're told in a local saloon, a customer sli slides an empty mug down a counter for a refill. But then things go wrong. The bartender's momentarily distracted by his favorite scene in My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, playing on the TV. The mug slides past the bartender and off the bar. As we begin caring about this motion, the mug is leaving the bar. And how is it leaving? Well, it's sliding on a horizontal counter. So we're going to say that its velocity is to the right this way. If the height of the counter is 0.86 meters, so that's this height right here, 0.86. Now you might remember, as far as scale goes, that uh, when we did the problem with the baseball pitch, we found that it fell about 0.84 meters. So this is a similar distance, which can give us some expectation about how long this process will take. If the mug, if the height of the counter is 0.86 meters, with what speed did the mug leave the counter? If it strikes 1.4 meters away from the base of the bar. So we have, we're given the location, how far this thing travels, and we want to know the initial speed. Comparing that to the previous question, we saw here that we were given the initial speed and asked how far it fell. We were also given how far the pitch traveled. Here we're told how far the mug travels horizontally, as the crow flies, as the mug flies, and we want to know with what initial speed it left the counter. Again, we're saying that it leaves with a horizontal speed as it begins to fall, so I know that my vy0, my initial y velocity, is going to be 0 meters per second. We're still using g as 10 meters per second squared downward. We see that our delta y, how far this falls, is again, negative 0.86 meters, and the distance that the tr this travels along x is 1.4 meters. We want to know what the horizontal velocity was. Well, what is velocity? It's how far something moves divided by how long it takes to move that far. That is the definition of average velocity. And here I know because there's no horizontal force, the horizontal component of this velocity is going to stay constant, even as the vertical part is growing as the mug falls. So let's begin by finding out how long this process takes. I know from the previous example that if I have no vertical velocity initially, the distance that this falls is going to be negative one-half g t squared, and I know that the distance I'm falling is negative, so I've checked and I have negative on both sides there. We're seeing negative 0.86 meters equals one-half of 10 is negative 5 here, t squared. So t is equal to the square root of, canceling the negatives on both sides here, 0.86 over 5, which works out to a familiar time, 0.41 seconds. Now we can use this time, an intermediate result, to figure out how fast this had to be moving in order to fall uh, 0.86 meters in the 0.41 seconds and travel 1.4 meters forward. The things we care about are how far forward it goes and how long it's been traveling. So v0 is how far it travels, 1.4 meters, divided by 0.41 seconds, and that works out to 3.41 meters per second. Now, careful here, we also see that there's a part b, what was the direction of the mug's velocity just before it hit the floor? To figure this out, I'm zooming in on this area here. Around the time that the mug hits the floor, its velocity, let's use green for its velocity here, it's going this way, the diagonal of this rectangle. So I need to know something about this triangle that has a leg here whose size is vx and whose leg on this side is vy. We're talking about this triangle, vx over, vy down, and the total velocity is the, the hypotenuse of that triangle, v final. To give a direction, we can say what this angle is right here. It's always important to specify you're measuring from horizontal or from vertical when you're looking for an angle. Here, I will specify that angle measured from horizontal. So that angle, I have an opposite side of the triangle here, whose length is vy, and an adjacent side whose length is vx. So that tells me that the tangent of that angle the opposite over adjacent side is what I'm looking for. So that's tangent of opposite vy over adjacent vx. Since we know that this is falling for 0.41 seconds and it gains 10 meters per second per second, I know that after 0.41 seconds it's traveling 4.1 meters per second downward. So we have 4.1 here over the horizontal speed, which we found out was 3.41. So we're saying that tan theta 
equals 4.1 over 3.41. That's meters per second and meters per second. And it's important to note that in physics, the value of a trig function like this is always going to be a dimensionless quantity. We see that that checks out. These units cancel top and bottom. That ratio is about 1.2. So tan theta is 1.2. How do I undo a tangent? To get rid of this, I use the inverse operation on both sides of the equation. So I want to apply the inverse tangent. Tan to the minus 1 is the button on your calculator. Tan inverse of 1.2. Tan inverse of tan of theta is just theta. So that equals tan to the minus 1 of 1.2, which works out to 50.2 degrees. And that's measured below horizontal. I always like to be explicit with the way I'm measuring the angle, below horizontal. If we wanted the angle from vertical, it is just the complement of this. So it would be 39.8 degrees. So there we have both the initial speed and the final angle. What if we wanted the magnitude of that final speed? Well, v final is just going to be using the Pythagorean theorem here. v final squared will be the final x vx squared plus the final vy squared. So v final would be the square root of 3.41 squared plus 4.1 squared, and you can work that out.